Former Supreme Court Justice Artemio Panganiban calls it devolution without federalization. He's referring to the Garcia Mandanas ruling, the Supreme Court decision made back in 2019, which affirmed the right of LGUs to include all forms of revenue collected by the national government in the computation of their internal revenue allotments. This ruling will take effect next year. It's expected to cost an extra $234 billion, about 1% of GDP. To deal with this cost, economic managers are looking to shift the implementation of various projects worth $405 billion to LGUs. If the national government fails to devolve such powers, it could put pressure on its international credit rating. But if LGUs are not prepared to handle the additional functions, it could spell disaster for the post-COVID response. This could perpetuate fiscal inequity between Imperial Manila and the rest of the country, as we are about to show. So stay tuned as we discuss this here on The Cusp. Hello, and welcome to another edition of The Cusp. I'm Doy Santos, your host. It was on the eve of another election year in 1991, when the local government code was first enacted. When it came into effect, the newly installed Ramos administration sought to lessen its fiscal impact by restricting its application to only the income taxes collected by the national government. But responsibility for operating hospitals was devolved straight away causing chaos and confusion. In 1992, the nation was in the grips of an energy crisis, which crippled the economy. Today, we face a far greater health crisis, which has dragged our economy down. This puts in doubt the ability of agencies at both the national and local level to handle the devolution of powers seamlessly, quote unquote. Based on the local government code, the IRA is allocated to local governments in the following manner. 23% to provinces, 23% to cities, 34% to municipalities, and 20% to barangays. The split for each follows a weighting based on population, 50%, land mass, 25%, and equal sharing, another 25%. The formula doesn't explicitly take into account, however, the fiscal capacity of the LGU, or lack thereof. With the Supreme Court decision, there's still likely to be a fiscal shortfall nationwide, due in part to lower revenues by the LGUs. But because of the way the IRA is split, there will be regions with a larger fiscal shortfall, primarily in the Visayas and Mindanao, while other regions like the National Capital Region and Southern Tagalog will do particularly well. We can clearly see that under a weaker economy, LGUs are expected to earn much less from their own sources of revenue next year. This is the forecast of the Bureau of Local Government Finance. The added IRAs from the national government will make up for some of this loss, but the devolved functions will add an extra burden on local governments. We can see this through this modeling, in which the National Capital Region and Calabarzon could actually have a surplus of over 64 billion pesos combined. But the regions outside Imperial Manila will suffer a huge fiscal black hole of over 310 billion pesos. In fact, the farther you go from Luzon, the worse it gets, with BARM accounting for nearly half of the deficit. Farm's fiscal problems will be fixed, however, with a separate allotment under the Bangsa Organic Law. Other regions, however, won't be so lucky. In the National Capital Region, cities rely on IRA for 20% of their revenues on average. In other words, they're not as dependent on national government fiscal transfers. Unlike poorer regions such as Bicol, Region 5, which is dependent on IRA for about 81% of its revenues. Now, Manilenos earn about eight times the income of Bicolanos on average. Yet the National Capital Region and Bicolandia receive an equal share of IRA at around 66 to 67 billion pesos. 
Of course, the National Capital Region has more than twice the population size of Bicol, but the latter has three times the land mass. This will generate and perpetuate huge inequity across the countryside, as less developed regions will be saddled with a larger fiscal burden. To make things more equitable, our fiscal constitution would need to ensure that every Filipino, regardless of where he or she lives, can expect the same level of service as what the average or best performing regions receive, with the same tax burden. In the spirit of Bayanihan, the Philippines needs to adopt a cooperative model of fiscal governance that observes fiscal equalization. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development defines fiscal equalization as a transfer of fiscal resources across jurisdictions with the aim of offsetting differences in revenue raising capacity or public service cost. Its principal objective is to allow sub-central governments to provide their citizens with similar sets of public services at a similar tax burden, even if incomes differ across areas. Fiscal equalization means there won't be winners and losers. The gap between rich and poor won't get bigger. Residents of poorer regions will have access to the same services as richer ones at the same standard without having to raise their tax burden any higher. Apart from preserving the economic inequities of our urban-rural divide, the Mandanas ruling may also have political consequences, not just in 2022, but beyond it as well. Mandanas will supercharge the ability of cities in the national capital region to invest in their people and infrastructure, leading to a different quality of life altogether in the capital compared to the regions. This will worsen the political, economic, and cultural divide between city and region. Growing inequity will just lead to further polarization and populism. To address this fiscal imbalance across jurisdictions, a reweighting of the IRA needs to occur, wherein richer regions, which have a greater fiscal capacity, should have their IRA discounted. A corresponding positive differential should be made to adjust the IRA of poorer regions to take into account their lower revenue raising capacity or higher cost of service provision. The national government should also decrease the amount of programs it plans to devolve to the regions, or at least delay it so that the fiscal burden doesn't fall on their shoulders too soon. Not in 2022 at least, while the Philippines still reels from the consequences of COVID and where local governments are on the front lines in dealing with the crisis. Continuing down the current path would seem like madness. Rather than eliminating the need for federalization, as Panganiban claims, the Mandanas ruling might actually accentuate the need for it. This is because clarifying the roles of different levels of government and designing the fiscal institutions to handle them is precisely what federalization would bring. But even President Duterte avoided this supposedly signature topic in his valedictory State of the Nation address last July. Mayor Sara Duterte, for her part, has said in the past that she is opposed to federalization as it will create many fiefdoms, which would be dominated by political dynasties. The failure of the Duterte administration to fix the fiscal imbalances across jurisdictions could therefore become one of its unkept promises. Thanks again for listening to another edition of The Cusp. I'm Doy Santos. Hope to see you soon.